2015, there were some, some things going on in the state with public corruption. There was a um, group that was put together, uh, Luther Strange has bragged about his public corruption unit that he put together. And I know a lot of things about what went on during that investigation and have, have, it's been one of the, the issues that's really torn at me in this election that the people of Alabama don't know the whole truth about what went on in Lee County during some of the investigations. And after uh, much consideration, I was ready to blow the top off of it, speak out on everything, and thus violate the grand jury secrecy laws. Because I believe it's important enough that the people of Alabama know what really happened in Lee County and how Luther Strange's public corruption team is really corrupt. In order to do that, I have to violate the law. And after I put out my press release, I had a, a ton of people around the state begging me not to do that because the entities that seek to hide the truth would love nothing more than to bury me under indictments and a conviction. So I have a, a press, I'm on, I have a, a statement I'm going to read so that I can stay on the right side of the law, but hopefully get the word out to the people of Alabama what has really been happening, who Luther Strange really is, and who the, the team that he calls his public corruption team really are. So earlier this year, the Court of Criminal Appeals unsealed portions of the record in the Mike Hubbard case. Professor Gershman's affidavit was one, one of the documents unsealed in that affidavit. Professor Gershman, Gershman notes that I testified in the Lee County Grand Jury. I have not disclosed my testimony before the Grand Jury and will not do so. The recent campaign ads by former Attorney General Luther Strange either falsely depicts his role in the Hubbard case, or if true, confirmed that his statements that he had recused from the case are false. The Office of the Attorney General has argued that the secrecy restrictions imposed on a grand jury witness do not apply to the prosecutor. Therefore, today, I call upon Attorney General Steve Marshall to release my testimony, preferably the unedited audio file, so that the people of Alabama can truly hear what transpired. And so that they'll know the truth about Luther Strange and Matt Hart. The grand jury is no longer in session and there is no reason for my testimony to be sealed and the truth not to be set free. Lest anyone think I am motivated by anything other than the truth, these concerns were raised by me in 2015 in the concerns that mo the same concerns that motivated me then motivate me today justice i have heard that there is an investigation into the public corruption that, that i'm speaking of but it is to remain under wraps to not influence this election cycle but my testimony is only a small piece of that and i'm going to ask again steve marshall attorney general steve marshall please release my testimony at that grand jury and let the people of Alabama know what transpired. Thank you. If you have any questions, Mike Ball can answer. You have, you're not gonna comment beyond that? Are you gonna take any questions? No, I don't look good in orange unless it's... So I doubt, I doubt, I doubt you'll have a question of course, I don't know. I, I don't know. He what was there he at the same. You know what he testified to? Huh? You know what he testified to? I don't to? know what he testified to. I talked to him about his test. I know what was going on at that time. I know what was going on at that time, and I would be glad to answer questions about that. I could certainly speculate, and I and I can give you an inform, some informed information about it. But uh, I haven't testified, and I haven't discussed his testimony with him. What would you like to discuss? I would. I would like to discuss. I would like to discuss. I, I would like to explain the context of what was going on at that time. Here's what I know. 
I know that before, before he, before that testimony, or in that time period, I know that that Ed was very, very upset that Joe Hubbard, who is the law partner of Baron Coleman, had had um, had given Ed information that Ed surmised had to have come from the investigation, from the Hubbard investigation, from the authorities. And when Ed found out about the leak, I know that he went to various and sundry people, including the Attorney General's office, to try to report it. I know that that uh, we know now, we know now that that information came from Matt Hart. It came from Matt Hart to Baron Coleman to Joe Hubbard to Ed Henry, and Ed Henry knew that he wasn't supposed to, that that information wasn't supposed to be being fed out through the political sources. And when he reported it, I know shortly afterward he wound up testifying at the grand jury, and I never I, he hadn't talked to me about it since then. I also know this. It's been released on AL. There's an AL.com article out there where there's a snippet of a conversation between Baron Coleman and Matt Hart. And I know that the context of that, the story that it's embedded in, doesn't really give the, the proper context to that little snippet of that conversation between Baron Coleman and Matt Hart. And what that is, that is Matt Hart panicking because he had found out that Ed Henry, that he had found out that Ed Henry was reporting this leak. And he was desperate to suppress, he, he was telling Baron Coleman, you better shut up. I'm going to drag you to the grand jury if you, uh, if, if people found out about this. We need to keep this secret. Matt Hart knew that he was not supposed to be feeding information to political operatives. I know that. I was an investigator for years. It is wrong. It, I believe it's illegal. So what happened, as a matter of fact, he even, if, if you can go to the link and listen to it yourself, listen to the conversation, and what that is, that conversation is about what, what Matt Hart was panicking with Ed about Ed Henry talking. He was wanting to shut this up. He didn't want it to get out. And Ed almost blew it out with his big mouth. <laughs> so, so what happened was, he he actually threatened Baron Coleman. He he says he he says people can't know about about us doing this. It's going to be a mess. And if and 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 if you don't shut up, I'll have to subpoena you to the grand jury. And it'll be embarrassing for both of us. That's in the two minutes. Listen for yourself and hear it. Now, I'm going to tell you what I believe happened. I believe Mr. Hart, Mr. Hart, instead of using the purpose of the grand jury secrecy, I believe in it. The purpose of the grand jury secrecy is that so that when people are under investigation that the rumors and innuendos don't get out and smear people ahead of the court of law. The purpose of the grand jury secrecy is to guarantee a fair trial. The purpose of the secrecy of the grand jury is not to allow a prosecutor to hide his misconduct, his improper and, I believe, illegal behavior. And there are many other episodes that led to this, but this is one of the, one of the instances that I saw during that, during that election cycle that led me, when I go on the Dale Jackson show sometime later, and... And, and when I made the statement trying to explain two weeks before election, trying to explain what, what, what had gone on so the public could be informed, the thing is, this is one of the things that led me to say I can see some kind of political connection between the investigation and our political opponents. So I can go on forever, but I will tell you, I believe that's what's happened. I, as far as I know, Ed has not compromised the grand jury secrecy. I know he was talking about this before, and he couldn't talk about it anymore. Governor Sabal, did the court look at any of the accusations related to the grand jury during the Hubbard trial? The court, what, and, and, and that's another misconception. I'm so glad 
people are finally asking hard questions. It's not a hard question for me. What the court did, what Judge Walker did, he was looking to things as it applies to the Hubbard case. When I'm talking about Matt Hart and his political activity, my problem isn't the investigation of the Hubbard case. It's not that at all. It is this improper beh political behavior that no investigator, no, prop no, no prosecutor has any business engaged. It's this other stuff that didn't get in the Hubbard case that didn't have anything to do with the Hubbard case, to my knowledge. That's your, what I got a problem with. Excuse me. Is, there any, is it your understanding that that conduct is being reviewed somewhere? At this point, uh, I'm confident that the proper authorities have been notified or are doing something. But now here's the problem. Here's the problem. When Luther Strange was the Attorney General, I was very concerned about it. And, and we had, I had a violation of state law that I had seen. And when I discovered there's a violation of state law, I, try, I knew Luther Strange had a conflict of interest, clear-cut conflict of interest, because if this is true, he was, he was staking his entire political career upon, upon being the guy that's cleaning up corruption. Will you understand, if this is true, what we're seeing, that the head of his anti-corruption unit was engaged in political activity, illegal, you understand that if this is true, that is a political disaster for him. He had a clear-cut conflict of interest to make sure that this was not true. So what I did, let me, so, so what I'm saying, he had a clear-cut conflict of interest. But I had tried, I would reported it to other people, and, and I had been confirmed that what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. But what I did, I realized that this violation of state law, that the Attorney General, because of who it is, the Attorney General was the only one that could do something. So I sent Luther Strange a text, and I laid it out to him. I sent him a text. I see this crime. I need it handled properly. I knew he had a conflict of interest. I knew that the only thing he could have done legally is recuse himself and appoint a special counsel, and that's all I wanted. And, But instead, a week later, I get a letter that misstated the law, cherry-picked the facts, and said there's nothing there. He didn't recuse himself, he didn't appoint a special counsel, and, and all I ever wanted was for this to be properly investigated. When, when once, in an odd sort of way, when the governor appointed Luther to be, to be the, uh, to be the um, United States Senate, and when he appointed Steve Marshall, uh, my concern about this being properly investigated went away. It, I, I'm confident that it that So where's all this investigation going to end up? It's none of my business. I'm not an investigator anymore. I'm a politician, and so none of this, they do that, but... but Where do you want it to end up? I, wa I want the truth to come out. I want, I want Matt Hart to be treated just like anybody else. I, I want the truth to prevail, and I want justice to prevail, and I want everybody to be treated the same. What did you have, Brian? In your opinion, did Mike Hubbard receive a fair trial from the Lee County prosecution? I don't. I don't have any beef with with the with the with the Mike Hubbard trial. Let the process play out. Due process is in play. It you know it will be reviewed by the appellate people. There there are probably some some issues. We don't know for sure. It hadn't held up yet. I will say this about the Hubbard investigation. When I started seeing this stuff. As an investigator, I was very concerned that, that, that this political stuff, that a lot of this other stuff that was going on was jeopardizing a proper investigation of the case. I will say that, that I, was, I was certainly, um, I was very concerned while this was going on that there were some things going on that will keep this from holding up. You know, it's one thing to get an arrest and a conviction. It's got to hold up. There are some, but as far as what happens in the Hubbard case and whether it's a fair trial, I don't have any beef with the judge. I don't have any beef with none of that. My problem is all this stuff that didn't have anything to do with the Mike Hubbard case that shouldn't be going on, but I know was going on. That's that's it. Your it's not about the, Mike Hubbard. Your answer is those saying, okay, uh, all the beans have been spilled now, but it's a week before election. 
I've been trying to spill these beans forever. It's, it's like nobody pays any attention until there's an election. I wish this would have all came out ahead of time. But, and, and, I, and there's, e there's even a lot more to this story uh, uh, with regard to, to, I eventually reported it to the governor. It's a long story. And, and one of the reasons, well, I think one of the thing, reasons that it t has taken so long for this to come out is because it's so complex. And it seems as if our media environment has, if, if you can't get it in one sentence or, uh, or tweets or just a few stories, this is a story that requires looking at the context of the whole, of the whole thing and putting it all together. And this is a story that didn't start yesterday. No. As a matter of fact, I have, I have been trying to, to figure out what in the heck's going on. Really, I thought everything was pretty well rocking along normal. Uh, I, I had I had nothing against Matt Hart or none of this until he called me, and when and when he called me and when I heard what I heard and saw what I saw, I knew it was wrong. I, and, and and I've talked to a lot of people privately. I've checked this and rechecked this, and uh, and quite frankly, if I'm wrong, I wish somebody would prove me wrong. I'd like I need to see some evidence, and the people need to see some evidence. But we get lost in all this hero worship, scapegoating politics. And, um, and, and I really, quite frankly, I really considered Luther a friend even though I had gotten in touch. I tried to be his friend up until I got that letter. When I got that letter on September 16th, 2016, I realized I can't be a friend because he's covering up crimes. Yes, sir. Uh, Ed mentioned uh, in his statement that uh, he's heard, he alluded this to, that there's an investigation into this, but it's to remain under wraps, so it's not to influence the election. They, nobody from law enforcement should do anything. They should not do anything to influence the outcome of, of an election. Um, so I will tell you, if you look, there's an Excel spreadsheet on that. Of, of who all I talked to, when I first discovered, Let's oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm gonna leave these here. If y'all want some, at any rate, I have taken all the measures to make sure that the proper people were notified, and that has that has been done and was done. The problem was when Luther was the attorney general, I realized that I had, as far as this violation of state law, I had to go to him. And I had to make sure that he, you know, a person can't be accountable for something unless they're told. So I went to him and I told him. Well, I, went, I texted him and, and I did everything I was supposed to do. And, and he had a choice between recusing himself and appointing a special counsel or trying to cover it up. And he tried to cover it up. And I'm sorry. I wish it wouldn't have happened like this. I don't like being in the position I'm in, but it is what it is. And I and I know I'm cranked up about it, but this is outrageous to me. This whole thing is absurd. You didn't appear emotional about it. <laughs> That's passionate, you. passionate. <laughs> passionate, there you go. Well, I'm I'm actually fed up. I've been trying to get this people to notice this and look at it for quite some time. This has been a long time developing. And uh, and quite frankly, I've gotten a bit of scorn and ridicule over it. But as as long as if it's true, it's true. The truth is the truth is the truth. Any other questions? That works for me. We're good. All right.